Hi, I'm Kyle from the Technology Learning Center, and today being Friday the 13th, I thought it appropriate that today we're going to make a tiny spooky house. This video will be a part one in a two-part series, as today I'm going to go over how to assemble our tiny house and what materials you'll need. In part two, we'll go ahead over how to paint it. Supplies-wise, you'll need two primary crafting materials. The first is thin cardboard, usually found in cereal boxes or tissue boxes. And the second is poster board, which is the same type of poster board you would use in something like school projects. To assemble and prepare all of this, we're going to need a few tools as well. First, we're going to need some scissors and optionally an X-Acto knife. Being very careful with this as it is incredibly sharp, but does help cut our poster board. Next, a hot glue gun, which is going to be used to assemble most of our materials. Though we're also going to need a glue stick as well for some of our pieces. And finally, just a ruler and a pencil to help mark and cut all of our different pieces for our house. To begin, I'm first assembling the walls of the house where I'm cutting 4 inch by 4 inch sections out of our poster board, making sure to mark everything out and then cutting it with my X-Acto knife. I am then hot gluing all these pieces together. To make a better joined corner between all of these walls, I am gluing the side of some of these walls to the backs of the other walls. As you can see here, I have a already pre-made and pre-painted piece of the wall, but we'll get to that in part two. Now I am adding a roof onto these walls. A good way to make this is by measuring a four inch line for the base of our triangle that's going to act as our roof piece onto our poster board. From the center of that four inch line, we are measuring two inches up and then connecting the edges of our base with the top of that two inch line to actually make our triangle. Once these triangle pieces are cut out and hot glued to the top of our walls, we're going to go ahead and cut out a measured piece of the thin cardboard to act as the actual side of our roofs, and we're going to go ahead and hot glue these to the triangles on the top. Next, now that we actually have the general structure of our house shaping up, I'm going to go ahead and make our front door and two side windows for our house. With that, I am making a bunch of 2 inch by 1 inch rectangular cardboard pieces. For our door, I'm going to go ahead and take one of these rectangular pieces and give it a slim siding along its edges. I'm giving mine edges that are about 1 16th of an inch, these edges being attached to the door using the glue stick. For my windows, I am using some of these 2 by 1 inch rectangles as the shutters for them. For these shutters, I'm going to mimic some paneling by cutting out strips of a half an inch wide pieces of the cardboard, cutting them to size, and then hot gluing them onto the shutter piece itself. Now these are going to be glued on in a particular way, starting with the bottom of the shutter. I am working up with each panel, having the panel above slightly overlap the one on the bottom. This gives our tiny house a little more realistic detailing. Once I have all of those done, I'm going to go ahead and use tiny 1 16th of an inch slivers to mimic the plus supports on the front of a window, and then hot gluing all of the windows and shutters onto the house. Now similar to the method we used for the shutters, I'm going to go ahead and make some wood side paneling for our house. Here I am also cutting a half an inch wide piece of cardboard strip that I'm going to go ahead and hot glue to the side of our house using that same slightly overlapping pattern that I used for the shutters. With these half an inch wide strips, their length is going to be determined completely by what side of the house you're working on and on if you need to account for the space between windows and doors. Finally, we're going to go ahead and make some shingling for our roof. For this, we are cutting up a bunch of about roughly a half an inch by a half an inch squares that's going to act as our shingles. You do not need to be perfectly exact with all of these as we are not really going for a neat and uniform roof look to our spooky house. We're going to start hot gluing these shingles onto our roof, starting with the lowest row first and just like our side paneling to our house and our shutters, we're going to have each row above these shutters slightly overlap the ones below them. Again, do not worry about being exact, we are making an abandoned spooky house, it does not need to be 100% uniform. Once all of this is done, we are capping our roof off by bending some shingles and then hot gluing them along the seam right at the top. Once that is all said and done, you will now have yourself a tiny house ready to paint so that we can turn it into a proper spooky house. 
make sure to stay tuned to our maker videos here as our part two to this series is going to go ahead and go over how to paint this and turn it into a proper spooky house. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to follow the Cape May County Library and the Technology Learning Center on our social media to find more fun crafts like this that you can do at home with the family. Enjoy your craft.